So as you can see, they're a little grumpy. Pretty good. Oh, hi. Uh, I have a little surprise. Good morning. This morning's weaning day and it's supposed to be warm so we want to get this kind of knocked out as quick as we can this morning. So I got Carissa tearing down the creep areas right now so that'll be all done when I get there. There's two different pens so likely it'll take two trips if not three to get all those lambs across the road. So it's going to take probably a good chunk of the morning and it's going to be loud. Just prepare yourself.
for now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just quit there. Yeah. We'll just quit there. Yeah. And I'll make that last Well, it's been a uh, long day so far, and i just coming in to check on these ewes, make sure they're okay. All right, I'm sure you can hear them. So I was able to rearrange the whole barn, which makes me so happy. Uh, so I have all the, all the ex-mums in here, very loud. And all the new moms, the moms to be, are all on this side now. So before I had them kind of spread out everywhere and it makes feeding really, really inefficient and just annoying almost. So now I have like one whole ration going down this pen, one whole ration going down this pen, and then that whole side gets flush right now. So it's really nice and it's easy and it'll only be for a few weeks and then we start, we start lambing and then it all throws everything for a wrench again. But, uh, so they'll be really loud. Uh, I'm gonna go in the other room because they're really loud. <laughs> they're gonna be loud for a couple days. Uh, they are usually, the ewes usually quiet down uh, a little quicker than the lambs. They're, the ewes are usually a day and a, two days and the lambs are probably about three days before they really start to get onto the water and have enough feed. Today was the best weaning day I have ever had in the history of me with sheep. It went really, really well, and the animals loaded really well. The thing about weaning, I do wait a good strong two months before I wean. I just find by then, the, the ewes aren't milking a whole lot. Uh, I do find they wean faster and a little less stressful because I take the lambs right out of this barn and take them across the road. So that seems to work pretty good for for here anyway. Now I have, uh, I have a little surprise. Uh, Mark and I finally uh, got enough done that he's still in the fields kind of wrapping stuff up, but we are gonna go away for a couple days. We're very excited. We have nothing ready my house is a mess I have no laundry clean I have no dishes clean I just went to get groceries and I went to get Mark and Jess cold treats for McDonald's and one spilt all over the back floor of our vehicle so I spent an hour trying to clean that up and we had to just leave instructions for Chris and Jess because they are in charge this week so whether I get this video uploaded before I leave or you might not see it for a little bit So as you can see, they're a little grumpy. A lot of these ewes in this group are our first time lammers and they're the ones that are really loud. The ones that have done this before are like, eh.
That's as good as I can do. And I didn't stain the carpet too bad. I think we're good to go. Now I have to go pack, get our golf clubs. It is so hard to leave this place, I swear. Lean forward, lean back. Oh, there they go. <laughs> I don't know if there's enough air in it. You gotta lean at the back. Good morning, you guys. I have been away for a week. I feel like it's been forever since I've talked to my camera, since I've talked to you guys. And uh, yeah, just got back from a tiny little mini vacay with Mark's brother. We went up to Northern Ontario, not too far north, but like near the French River, if you know where that is. <laughs> she's my shadow, cause she's just said she's been depressed all week and not really leaving the house. It has been a week since I weaned this group of ewes and their lambs. So today I'm just gonna go through and show you how I weaned my lambs last week, which was Saturday. Today everything should be good and quiet uh, and we'll go across the road, see how those lambs are doing. And I also wanna take a weaning weight off those lambs. I use my weaning weights not necessarily as a, uh, a tool to see, oh, look how awesome my lambs do. It's actually a tool to see, oh, look how awesome or not awesome their mums do. So that's what I use my weaning weight info for. So it's a fairly big group over there. Uh, and Carissa just went home, it's Saturday. She's been working all week for me. So I just thought I would give her the day off and not make her help me do that today. Let's go in and see how these mums are doing a week later. They are very quiet today. They were not, that was not the case a week ago. So if you remember, I had ewes and babies in this pen and this pen, just in the front like three quarters of these pens. So what Chris and I did was we set up an area so they could go kind of across and into the handling system. So you kind of saw the video, you kind of saw some footage that showed us do that. That is just the easiest way to get them to move together. It's a bit tricky because lambs have never really been moved. So they really do rely on following mum. So that's what we did. We did the far side first and then we did the closest side second. We did it in three loads. Um, I can't remember right now how many lambs total there were. We'll see how many today, how many lambs we actually did move. So what you saw last week was the ewes and the lambs came through here they went through here, through the tub, and in through the chute. And then here's where the ewes would go straight through the guillotine gate. So they went through and back over into their pen. But the lambs, I could open this, and they went back through 
and then they went just in this handling in this uh, holding pen again and then when we had it when we had them all separated so the, the the lamb stayed back and the and the ewes went into back into their pen once that was done then I, I backed up the trailer into around here um, and then I set up the handling system so the lambs would hopefully individually go one by one up the ramp and into the livestock trailer and then they go for a two second drive across the road let's talk a little bit about what they're getting to eat now so right now they're just getting a, a maintenance ration of haylage a little bit of corn silage and some mineral that's it um, and only because I'd be feeding them dry hay right now I have some good dry hay I should be feeding the problem is I'm trying to get I'm trying to make space on the pad outside because we want to do fourth cut and we want to do a new bag of corn silage. So I want to get rid of the, the older inventory so I can so I can get a new bag started. So they are getting this, but going forward I will likely have a bale of dry hay that I would feed my uh, ewes that, are, that I'm trying to dry off. You want a real low energy ration for these ladies so they stop producing milk. Um, the one trigger is pulling the lambs off and the second trigger is just really really just get rid of that energy in their feed but they look good quiet hello ladies some other cool things kind of happened when i was gone you coming a bunch of you guys had actually messaged me and let me know that a pretty big YouTuber had mentioned me, I had did a little shout out on uh, on their channel because they were uh, hoof trimming their goats. So they had the a trim shoot that I ha had actually reviewed a few years, a few years ago, a couple years ago. They mentioned me on their channel and you guys actually let me know that th that uh, that he did. So that was the Arms Family, Arms Family Homestead, I think is what it's called. Uh, so I watched the whole video last night and I was like, oh my goodness. So that's pretty, that's, that's pretty cool when uh, you see kind of the power of YouTube and, and the power of community. So thank you for the shadow arms family homestead and hopefully this will repay the, the favor. They're a huge channel. So if you haven't seen them, subscribe and check them out. But uh, I'm pretty small school compared to some of the other YouTubers. So anyway, let's go to the other barn and take some weights now that it's raining. I'm going to get soaked. The other ones are louder than my ween, my wieners. Quiet. Every time I come in here, they pretend that they don't have full feed sitting in front of them and they do. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> So they look really good and they look pretty even considering they lambed over like a month. Now this side's a bit trickier to weigh because I have to bring them in through the center alley. So it's going to take a little bit. Okay, everything is set up. My scale, the chute, the tub, and I'm going to run them through the center alley. So I'll set up my camera and you guys can see them kind of coming in. This part isn't the greatest, but I've kind of got it down to a science so hopefully just using the gate I can get them up by myself solo it's much easier with two people I have to say so I'm only going to bring a few up and uh, and then I'll drop them back over here but I'll put a gate up so they can't so I can keep taking out of that pen at the back and then putting them back in the pen at the front if you know what I'm saying all right let's do this Oh. 
putting up my Gallagher to take their, I'm gonna scan their ear tag and then all their birth data will come up on, on my Gallagher so I can see how much they've gained every single day since they were born and that's called an overall average daily gain. Uh, I just like to know that for my own curiosity, I guess. It's also just a measurement I can I can see how good mom was milking and it can really range depending on how many lambs mom had. Just what I can see, it looks fairly uniform and I think partly that's because I didn't have a lot of multiples. I had I had maybe a few sets of triplets but for the most part they were singles and twins and you can really tell. Now there's a range in the actual date of birth of these lambs because they're kind of spread over over about a month. I'm gonna guess that my weaning, average weaning weight for this group is, is actually fairly good. Uh, and that will be because the more lambs a ewe has, I mean, the more I have to pull off and put on the machine. And they usually do fairly good, but they never do as good as when they're left with mom. However, they're alive, which is why I have the machine. Remember, you only has two teats, so they, she services twins really well and services singles really, really well. But once you get into three, four, five, six lambs, uh, that's asking way too much for mom. So I'm just gonna, I'm putting out a guess now that I'm gonna think that my average weight of this group, some of them are, the youngest ones are maybe only about seven weeks old and the oldest ones are probably about 10 or 11 weeks, like 10 weeks oldish. Uh, I'm gonna say the average, average weight will easily be 50 pounds, if not a little bit more for the whole group. There's some, there's a few little ones, but for the most part they look fairly uniform and and that's my goal is to no matter what the weight as long as they're pretty tight together then they'll grow together that's the that's the hope anyway so I'm just gonna I'm gonna set my session I'm gonna hop in with them they've never been through this system and lambs until they get used to doing the same thing over and over and over again kind of like humans uh, they're a little leery of this so I get right in and push them through and then they're just gonna flop back into their own pen so a very all I'm doing today is scanning the tag that's it Pregnancy toxemia. So I pulled this one off because mom wasn't milking. Pretty good. Okay, I just finished. I'm gonna just go over the stats and let you guys know how this group did because I am very curious. So there was 125 in this group. Uh, my minimum weight, so there was one little little one and it was 25 pounds. The biggest one was 83 and a half pounds for an average of 58.27 pounds weaning weight. I don't think I've ever had like average on a whole group. I don't think I've ever had a weaning weight that heavy. Granted, there are some older lambs in this group and they've been weaned for a week, so there's a little cheatery going on there. Very, very happy with that. Let's see how the sired lambs did, which breed. So 2% of this group was Ile de France sired. They were, it's hard to say, there's only two lambs, so I'm not even gonna judge that. Uh, on average, they weighed 48 pounds. 30% uh, of this group was Rito sired and uh, they were they were my best they were 59.27 pounds the suffix sired there was only 22 in that group the suffix were 57.8 average 
and the steel, they were the majority of this group were steel sired, so those are my new steel rams. I actually cannot believe that most of these were steel sired because I was really concerned. I have that one ram that's not even working. So four rams sired 51% of this group. So 64 lambs, which awesome. And they were they were right in the mix. So they were right behind the Ritos coming in at 58.16 pounds average weaning weight. So just a nice group. Those weaning weights again are very much probably I could probably attribute that to how many lambs mom had so a lot of those really nice weights uh, could just be they could be older lambs it could be singles so anyway very very happy with this group part of weaning that I didn't really talk about once I got these lambs over here is that first week there's quite a bit of transition so across the road they've been on a, a prepared creep pellet so it had everything all in one little pellet the corn, the soy, <clears throat> the premix, everything in just one little easy pellet, and it was about an 18% protein pellet. And they were on it since they were probably about two weeks old. Um, and then their consumption gradually increases as they get older. That week that I went to wean them, they were on the feed like crazy, uh, which to me is a really good sign. They're kind of mom is, mom's lactation. She's just getting on in her lactation. So that's one really good good sure way to know that they're kind of ready to wean. They were also really on the mum's TMR, so their, their mixed ration, and uh, so they were really craving that forage, you know, getting their rumen going. So as they move over to this barn, they're actually put on a corn pellet, it was a pellet supplement, so it's not a complete pellet, um, it doesn't have the corn in it, so I mix it 80, about it's about an 80 20 split not exactly quite but to make about a uh, 15 percent 14 or 15 percent lamb finishing ration so i have a proportioner in the corner it runs through this auger and it mixes so it's got the right proportion and then this is kind of a nice feeder it's called a three-in-one so there's two big kind of holding containers and then a li lip at the bottom and each one of these feeders can feed about 70 lambs. So that's real nice. It's all the auger, it's auto fill, so they can fill up while I'm spreading out hay. And then uh, they can just free choice the grain. Uh, that transition, you have to be real careful. I've run into bloat issues. So you do have to be care very, very careful in transition. Some people kind of gradually put up this, this ration. Uh, or maybe you want to bring over some of your pre prepared pellet and put it in these feeders. It's kind of work with your feed guy or your vet and just see what uh, what works well for you. But what I find is uh, they go right onto this ration as long as the proportion's right. And I got them on full hay for that rumen. So they get hay in the bunk and they get, they get grain in the feeder and it works real well. And knock on wood, I have not had a bloat issue in here since that one time and I lost like six. So that was really disappointing and if you can prevent bloat, it's a lot easier than treating it. Guys, I'm so happy uh, I was able to get away. Just thank you for sticking around and waiting for me to come back and to give me a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a break. I haven't actually taken a break from YouTube since basically maybe before. I don't think I've ever taken a week off YouTube. Uh, maybe when Amy died. Uh, and that was 2018. So just to take this, I don't think it'll be a whole week, but for me, um, I've been really trying to up the amount of videos that I put out every week. And uh, for a creator, you really do get fatigued just in, um, sometimes I just don't want to look at my face on the camera. Uh, it takes a lot from me to press play every, every day and to know that that you guys watch and appreciate and subscribe just to see me and my family and my sheep. And to know that you'll wait for me to come back if I do have to take a breather. Sorry, that was a fly. It literally means the world to me. It's that kind of thing that that makes me continue to want to, to, to do YouTube. So thanks for being patient and waiting for me. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my Saturday. I'm gonna edit this video, so hopefully you can see it tomorrow and I'm going to put my ewes away, I'm gonna clear my lambs away, clean up, and maybe just chill for the rest of the day.
Guys, have a great rest of your weekend and we will see you this week.